Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation, along with... CJ Lou from the Fire It Up with CJ show. Woohoo! If you've ever wanted more strength and courage in your life for whatever comes your way, then do we have the hope, faith, and love show for you. Today, we'll talk about serpent scars, body upgrades, your reviews, Saturn return, and Jupiter, and one difficult decision and how it changes everything. So welcome back to the show, CJ. Are you ready to shine? Oh, <laughs> I think so. No. Oh. Okay. Wow, I can feel your heart, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can start with the easy thing. We got that thing. We got the 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 um, splint off a week and a half ago. I think I saw you after that, and mm -hmm. and it has this scar. I don't know if you want me to show it to you or people, but it has a serpentine scar that goes up right to the to the hand. Oh, let's see I it. Think, I need I to think see it. I think it represents transformation. Wow, wow! It's like the cataclysm, um, Hermes. Yeah, so wow. I think it totally represents transformation. My wrist in hand is starting to work. I should be further ahead, but this was um, by far the single most challenging week of our life. Um, and I had to ask, do I want to do this? But as, as I, I spoke with Dr. Michael Lennox yesterday, amazing astrologer, and he said, this is your dharma. And that's how I feel. This, this actually makes me feel better um, sharing with people. It's a healing experience. But so I haven't quite kept up on the wrist this week, um, but I will. And and it is uh, functional. Like we had a, a a very big day on Wednesday. It's all a blur. And I had to drive from here in northern New Jersey down into Philly and back. And there was no way I would have been able to do it with. It, it's just wild watching all the synchronicities and stuff. I couldn't have done it with one hand. And the only time the doctor ha had where he could fit me in with the splint removal was a week earlier than he wanted. Hmm. Um, it was the only way it fit in the schedule. So he took it off a week early, which actually allowed me to do the drive on Wednesday. Wow. So do you want to talk about your stuff first? It might be easy. Cause, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe so. Once, once we go, <laughs> once we go where, uh, where uh, no one dares to go before, um, it'll be very positive for people, I believe. But um, all right. Let's talk about the planets, because I was just talking with Michael Lennox about it yesterday. Your Saturn return and Jupiter. Yes. Well, I was just listening to a shamanic reading that I did for myself with um, Daniel Giormano, who, if you haven't ever interviewed, I would highly recommend. He's extremely talented. And when um, every 29 and a half years, you go through a Saturn return. So my Saturn return and every one Saturn return um, varies in terms of how early it starts. And so my started um, May of last year and it continues until February of this year. And then after that, there's a usually your Saturn and your Jupiter are, are aligned. And so they go one and one. Mine is because my Saturn return started earlier. Um, my Jupiter, which is kind of like the accelerant for, it's like mm -hmm. the high growth area happened afterwards. And so this year has been a year of getting clear with what I want, getting clear with what I don't want. It's that whole recapitulation. And, um, I, for whatever reason, I thought that this was going to be over a longer period of time, but I, I was listening to it going, Oh no, that was this whole year. And I can see this whole year being, um, uh, uh, that process. And so it was interesting to see, I only have a couple more ye months before my Saturn return ends. And then Jupiter, um, begins the expansive, which I can't even imagine expanding more than I've been expanding. But, um, I think if you don't it, it mind, you, you get expand. to be clear on what your, on what your container is before it gets expanded. Basically you're, you're, you're building your balloon right now. You haven't inflated it. <laughs> But what's the balloon going to look like? You know, is it going to be Barney? It's a bit of hot air balloon. What is this thing going to be? Yeah. Once you blow it up. Yeah. And I think I'm, I'm actually getting clearer and clearer with what, with respect to what I want to do. So it's been a very blessed year. And I, I don't know why I just thought, oh, I'm going to do my, um, my automatic writing. And so I started doing my automatic writing and I thought, oh no, I'm just going to read through my whole year's worth of automatic writing. <laughs> I don't know what, and, and it was just such, 
an unbelievable process because there is a prescience, a sense of like even to the point of, of like, here's what I'm working on. And it's literally um, over the last couple of months, my business partner and I have been putting together our slides and the slides that we've put together is a journey that talks about a, a, a practical way in which people can navigate their traumas and, you know, why we have traumas, um, the ways that we um, typically deal with um, defending ourselves from opening up and how we actually move to a different place from moving from our subconscious patterning to our conscious intentional expansion awareness. And so the way that it's coming together is so beautiful and I had no idea, but even in January, I was using terms that I'm now using now in my workshop. And the woman that um, I was even talking about scars and how we actually have scars that we actually have to have wounded up, just like your serpentine scar. Mm -hmm. And uh, and she wrote a book called The Art of Scars. And so it's just like, it, it was wow. like a prescience. Everything was a prescience of what's happening now. It's It's bizarre. We just started watching the new Matrix movie, and and that released on on this very important day for us, Wednesday, one two 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 one uh, one two 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 one, and uh, there's all sorts of deja vu's and things, particularly early on in the movie, and um, it's interesting that yesterday evening I had a discussion with Jessica, and we we're talking about different names, and and I said, well, w what if we named one of the girls? Uh, or she's mentioned something like cartoons and I'm like, Oh, do we want to go with cartoons characters? Maybe, you know, like bugs or Woody. Yeah. And, and then a few Cute. minutes later we fell asleep and, and we started this morning and the first character you meet in the movie name is bugs. So oh, like, wow. Like bugs bunny. Oh, cute. You take note of these things. We, we are in a sense in a matrix in that this earth is a learning school. This is, this is a, a place where you go from the divine, which is everywhere, in order to learn and grow and expand. And I think the further you go, this is a lot, a lot of uh, things from the matrix here, the further you go down the rabbit hole, Alice in Wonderland, the further you go, the more you begin to recognize these things. Mm -hmm. So last night I was writing something for class or something, and I used a word that I don't use very often, prescience. And then here you are just a few minutes ago going prescient. So you go back and you look at the scar and you go back and you look to the beginning of the year and you realize the cosmic nature of this, the cosmic setup. Yes, there is this freak will component, but there is so much more going on than meets the eye that it's just crazy. And I think the further you get down this mystic rabbit hole, the more you begin to recognize it. Mm -hmm. And that you're showing me the scar and that this was like yeah. the thing that, you know, I was, I was actually <laughs> tuning into yesterday. I mean, it really is sort of incredible. And um, yesterday I had um, a chiropractic session and, I have this very gifted healer and uh, he was working and I literally feel like my, when, when I'm in his presence, my body starts talking to me. It's like, Oh, here, Oh, here. And he's like, okay, I got it. And he's following it. And then I'm, I just said moon. I don't know. I just hear the word moon. And he's like, Oh, I get it. And um, he said, Oh, your body is now becoming sensitized to the planetary movements. And so like, the more tune we become, the more we tune into all the universe speaking to us, right? The mm -hmm. automatic writing is really like, you know, first it starts off as like, you know, for me at least, it started off with like a whisper to like, and then it's like you're getting, it's not even like, I feel like it's getting more and more refined. And it's like, now it's like these like, messages from something that is planetary it's not like a message from like cj you need to work on these kind it's like it's like a planetary call for help <laughs> so to speak and i'm getting tuned and i said oh that's interesting how does this work and he said you know in order like you're asking to be upgraded and so if you're like hearing the vibrations that are upgraded and your body is not upgraded, then there's this constant process of like catching the body has to upgrade. And then like, then, you, you know, the, this kind of integrative process process. And I thought, Oh wow, I had no 
idea that this was happening, that there is this um, upgrading that's happening and your body has to get adjusted and retuned so that it can be a more accurate receiver of the messages. And that's quite phenomenal. I mean, I, who would have thought I would be on this journey at this point thinking about this stuff? It's very cool, and it's it's a continuation of multiple interviews I did this week. Mm -hmm. The new gen, particularly the newest gen, I'm convinced is coming in with this collective consciousness already in their upgraded system. They don't need what you're getting is 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 you're getting an operating system upgrade, mm -hmm. and and they're already coming in with that new operating system. Right. And that new operating system is is the collective. And so what we're seeing is it's powerful, but these are last gasps of the I walking around before we return at a higher level to a sense of weirdness. Mm. Is what, what else did Michael Lennox have to say? Because I, I love his, your interviews with him. Uh, the shortest version of this in Michael Sandler language is that 22 into half of 23 is halftime. Um, that what went on in 2020 and 2021 was really, in a sense, preparing us for an, an even bigger upheaval coming in 2023 and 2024. And so you have a <laughs> calmer year where there are no planetary conjunctions. There's just nodal activity. You have a calmer year to jaw inward and work on your house. Mm. Is your house stable? Is your house secure? In other words, by house, who is CJ? What is CJ about? Can I get an alignment? Can you get an alignment with... Um, that that knowingness of mm -hmm. your beingness so that when the storm so to speak of 2023 come through and from a u.s perspective he sees it as big upheaval in this country because we're having a a massive 250 year return right now mm. uh, for this country sort of like the saturn return of 1776 where we were built on uh, all men are created equal and yet the guys writing it have slay <laughs> right um that's coming to a head. And so we're seeing a lot of last gasp of that, mm. which is very powerful <clears throat> this time. Mm. So this is a time where we get to, it's not gloom and doom, but we have a choice. So we can call this the winter of our soul. We can view winter and, and we're one of the fortunate parts of the country. I believe you may be too, but there's actually a tiny bit of snow outside, which is very rare in the country this mm -hmm. year. And we, we just got it today. Uh, just an inch, but still pretty. We can view winter as pretty and as a time to take all of this water and soak it up into the roots mm. so that we're ready for whatever comes. Mm. Or we can say, it's gloomy, it's dark, I'm tired, I don't feel like doing it now. And then when we get to the really hot summer, you're not prepared. So mm. this that's what I'm getting in my, in my language of, of what our discussion was mm -hmm. for 2022 and 23. Easier in some ways, but really a time for drawing inward, collecting all that water, knowing what you are, and then going, all right, I'm not really ready when the calendar flips. At like Maybe it's June of 2023, but I can, I can handle this. Yeah. You know, it's, I, what, I, what it makes me wonder. And we can handle this. Yeah. What makes me wonder is that. You know how in, in all these readings, if you're super sensitive, you start feeling these things beforehand, like two or three months before it even starts, you know, before 2022 even arrives. And um, I'm feeling it already. Like, it, it, you know, I was going through just being in presence and to the extent that I can. And um, it was just painful stuff about like the most painful kind of primal experience of um like heartache of my like being born and not having a mother that like loved me you know and, and a brother that loved me a father yes but a mother and you know to be arriving on the earth and not having someone who cherished and loved you and I think like ever since it's just been this well, what's wrong with me? What can I do to change? What happened? How did this happen? Why don't you love me? That that energy from that started maybe in utero or birth has been with me ever since. And it's it's just wild to think that and you know, my mom loves me now, you know, but it's it's the 
at at when you're a baby, knowing that deep in your soul and just constantly having it as like an imprint mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff, like reconciling that stuff is I think the kind of stuff that you're talking about, it's like going inward into the roots, even if it's your ancestral roots and examining, you know, those years where there's like a little kink in the little trees, you know, when the trees don't get enough, there's like a little weird pattern in, in the rings and the circle of the tree. It feels like that's, you know, my original pattern was a little bit messed up. Well, that's that's exactly what we're talking about in, on a level and a very it's, it's, it's profound what you brought out because I didn't go that deep and you did, which is this is a time of let's clear those wounds. Let's clear those blocks, not just on me, but ancestral and familial and go back and go back to get as clear and light so that you can see and feel into whatever is coming and be able to pivot with it better. And then there is that collective element to it. We are really going into a collective time period. So we get to heal the wounds, not just CJ's wounds. But what are the wounds that CJ existed with before CJ existed? Not meaning on the other side of the veil, but from your family, mm -hmm. from the collective, from generation after generation. And you here now as a representative of a collective, we all are, but some are more on the cutting edge of a wickedness, we can say, no levels than others. Our job is to represent more than ourselves moving yeah. forward. And it hurts. I mean, to, to feel as a baby, I mean, it actually for me was like being despised, you know, like having feeling that sense of being despised at birth. It's just to feel it in your heart and feel the pain. It was just so wrenching. And so I'm it's not because yeah. I, I agree. I'm not going to go into my whole family at this point, but but I'm going to go. Ditto. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, what's amazing is I talked to a friend of mine. And I don't talk a lot about this, but and, and a friend's like, oh, I had the same thing. Uh, it's it's I think all of us at some level, whether it's at age zero to in birth, you know, we have this this wound that wounds us. And, you know, and stays with us. It's like, you know, it's almost like, you know, when you think about the ring of the tree, you know, when it's a little bit distorted, then all the rings around it, <laughs> I think, probably echo that distortion. And I'm going to go back. I've got to look it up one of these days. There is a Japanese art. Kintsuji? Where, is that it, where they break, things break, and then they put like gold in there and make it even better. Sure, yes, golden joinery. Say that word again. Kintsuji? And Kintsuji. golden joinery. And actually, the um, book that my partner and I are um, going to write is The Art of Golden Joinery, and it's about Kintsuji. Of course <laughs> it is. Of course <laughs> it is. Her book was speak, about but... <laughs> how we break into different pieces and how we have scars, which is those like the golden joinery and how we join together. You would think that we play on this show. We don't play at all. Universe is, is planning for us. That knot that you get at that early age is that scar or wound. When we spoke last, I was focusing on, I do not want to give energy. <laughs> Are we going to be okay, Ruth? We'll go quiet again in a minute. But we had had an ultrasound a couple weeks ago, right before our last show. And it was the 16-week ultrasound. And at 12 weeks, the ultrasound was, was perfect. Uh, Hannah's super healthy, happy, um, right on track. Miraku super healthy, happy, right on track. Maybe like a day behind in size-wise, like basically identical. And, um, and that was close to a 13-week ultrasound. Around 15 weeks, I felt like we should have one early. Um, but it didn't make sense. I mean, 16 weeks is coming up very quickly. It's what are you going to do? There's nothing necessary. Um, and I thought maybe that's just because of the miscarriages in the past and, and ego getting worried. Uh, we came up on that 16 week ultrasound. And the day before I was very honest with Jessica and said, I'm pretty freaked out. I'm really, really scared about this. And we're driving there and I'm having to watch my breath because it was so terrifying. And I didn't know why is this just ego? We had the ultrasound, and um, one girl, Hannah, was in a much bigger sack filled with a lot of fluid. Um, 
and um, and was very very had grown quite a bit. Um, the other girl, Miraku, was in a very small sack and had grown very little. And it was like the Matrix and Deja Vu, and that we had had a um, we had had a, a midwife many weeks before said, "Well, we don't we don't work with mono uh, mono dichromatic twins um, because they can have this problem, they can have that, they can have twin to twin fetal syndrome." It's interesting that she mentioned it. Then we met with our first doctor, and he's like, "I've seen twin to twin uh, uh, transfusion syndrome as early as 16 weeks." And here we are looking at this, and I'm like, "What is that? Like foreshadowed in a movie? I'm like, what does this mean?" And so they scheduled another uh, another visit with a uh, with a uh, specialist after that. And we may have met after we met with the specialist. Specialist and 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 I was fathering up. It took work to get in with the specialist. And I'm like on the phone. Then I'm showing up in person. I think I mentioned that. We get in with the specialist. They um, saw the same thing. And they referred us to Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, but they said they'd also do a uh, one more ultrasound in advance because Children's, Ho Children's Hospital couldn't get us in until this Wednesday. And this was uh, like a, a little over a week ago. So they said they'd do one on Monday, and if it was emergency, they'd try to get us in sooner. We did an ultrasound on Monday. Uh, nobody said it's a, it's a true emergency, so they said, we'll get you in on Wednesday. And so during this time, doing lots and lots of prayer, lots of time with the angels, lots of time with my hand on Jessica's belly doing healing work. You know, I'm pulling all the stops out, all the tools that I know, plus contacting all the healers that I know. And then we went down on Wednesday, Rue's first day here in this in this home, uh, all by himself all day. Mm. Uh, so... Um, Got it set up. We get down there. Um, we had to leave here. We we got up at two. We were both awake at two. We had to get out of bed at four. We got down there at six thirty. We're in the first X-ray or ultrasound at seven, and we finished the ultrasounds. And the um, uh, a doctor comes in because I guess the, the the technician had been going out, speaking to people, coming back in. It felt kind of like an interrogation, like they're behind glass or something, yeah. you know, discussing, well, what are you going to, what you, what's the rubber hose you're going to pull out with next or something? <sighs> and uh, um, the woman asked, and I had been thinking about it the day before I had, I had done some interesting muscle testing. And the day before we went down there, I muscle tested that we'd need surgery, um, which is interesting. I hadn't before that. But then the morning of, I was muscle testing that we didn't. But what I didn't do is do a check of, is ego getting involved here? Mm. Um, like, am I too scared to actually go into that? Um, and a woman doctor came in as we were finishing the ultrasound saying, um, did Jessica eat last night? And I'm like, shoot, I knew it. But um, mm. I, I like ate, had a snack just a little bit ago, but not much. And um, I, I had been trying to kind of lead the witness for the ultrasound, like, look at how good they're looking. Look at how good this is. Look at how good. And and the, the doctor said, you know, I can't really say anything, but um, I wish we knew more on how to um, save babies than we do. Uh, we went from there. We went to uh, Jessica had, or, uh, I'm doing the abridged version. She had a, um, what was supposed to be a half an hour um uh, EKG session with the girls to to uh, check out their heart health turned into over an hour and um, then they were ready to meet with us in a conference room and and all of these meetings feel like uh, you can go to the principal's office mm -hmm. you know, doctor comes in closes the door and the doctor came in and uh, we'll see how I handle this um, and said um, I think the exact words are escaping me now. I'm actually mentally blocking it already. Um, I can give you one baby. And um, explained, this is the abridged version. If everybody wants the longer version, we, we did it in class for a mystics. I'll probably do it on Monday for YouTube. But we, um, the placenta was not built right for two. Mm. When the girl split, which is out of one egg, 
um, it wasn't really meant to be twins. Mm. And so one girl is getting, uh, was getting an overabundance of nutrients mm. and swimming in too big of a bubble, which meant it was a big strain on her heart having to deal with all of this fluid. Mm. The other had almost no nutrients in bubble and was no longer really growing. Mm. And on the electrocardiogram, her heart was even sometimes while it was pumping, the, the, the fluid was being sucked backwards. Mm. And she was in danger of passing at any moment. Mm. And if Miraku passed, um, wouldn't necessarily take Hana with her, but quite possibly lead to uh, permanent brain damage. And as it was, Hana was in danger of a heart attack as well because she's pushing all this extra fluid that she's mm. been given. By her. And so we had to make the most difficult decision that I think anybody has to make. We went quiet. We asked for a little time. We'd been talking to the angels. We were using not just all the tricks of the trade to try to heal, but to try to feel in so that this is a, a love-based decision not a fear-based decision. Mm. You always want to act out of love. So certainly, it was so many miracles took place. The doctor was well down the rabbit hole. She'd, she'd spent years working to uh, save babies in Africa. She was doing the study on one of these two syndromes. It turns out they have two syndromes, both of which are uh, a, a, about 10% chance, and they had them both. Mm. And she's the leader in doing the studies on this. So we got the best of the wow. best in the foundation. And I said to her, I said, because I, I'm a miracles guy, you know? And I'm like, has, and I said, forget about how it happened or why it happened. Has any situation like this ever corrected itself? And she said, no, not ever. She goes, what can happen is you leave here and even before we have surgery, one of the babies has died and the damage is done. And so she's like, I've got you scheduled if you want to go for it tomorrow morning at 730. We went quiet, had them go out of the room for a minute, took our time, felt into it and just we knew in our hearts what we needed to do. And when she came back in, I think I had asked that last question when she came back in, but I asked, I'm always like to do the Columbo question. But just one more thing. I said, if it's the case that a baby could die by tomorrow morning, is there any way you can get us in sooner? I'm like, I don't know how your schedule works, Christmas coming up, all this stuff. And she said, you know, I don't think so, but let me ask. And they scheduled us for an hour later. Wow. So there wasn't much chance for a physical say goodbye. But I mean, I, I had trouble looking at the ultrasounds this time because you could see. Mm. You could see. So it was Jessica's first surgery. And um, I got to walk her very minor in quotes procedure energetically there is no bigger procedure in your life ever period done deal as far as i can tell i got to walk her to the to the surgery doors and then i went back and sat first i sat in one room and then they moved me in the middle of meditation i'm like it's gonna take a minute for me to walk i'm not quite in my body right now it wasn't that i was hovering over her i was just in the sacred place and i had actually sat with hana and miraku and then at uh, 357 on wednesday I felt Miraku take off. Mm. So I really am in a sense of peace. There's a lot of grieving that gets to be done. Right now I'm manning up, so to speak. I get to take care of her. She, she's on total bed rest. She can go to the bathroom and go back. Um, and we get to find out Monday how Hannah's heart is doing. So when there was a chance... A few of the questions. Sorry if I'm not getting it fully in order. 
there was a 10 to 15 percent chance of losing HANA and the operation. Mm-hmm. And um, the most important thing to me that I was most concerned about is, and, and I can't believe I'm going to say this, while you're concerned for your kids, is there a chance that I could lose Jessica? Oh, God. And there wasn't. That's when I green lighted. <laughs> And it was a joint. She's going through her own similar, same process. Where mm-hmm. our brain totally linked, but um, three fifty-seven takeoff, only at like four fifteen, four twenty, because it's a fifteen-minute procedure. But they said it could take hours, uh, but the procedure's really fast. And they came rolling back in at four fifteen, four twenty, and the doctor is ecstatic, saying, uh, um, "It went great. It only took ten minutes. Hannah's doing great." Oh, good. So she said she can't promise anything to us. And she goes, I don't want to get ahead of myself. She's got, she's like, you're going to have heart tests on Monday. She's going to need to re-sculpt her heart because her heart has thickened because it had to do so much extra pumping Mm. because there was so much more pressure because she was in too, too much, like too high a PSI environment. Um, But and she goes, you know, cardiac team might want to follow you afterwards. Don't worry about that. She said, but I can't tell you anything till Monday. Let's see Monday. So we have a, uh, oh, there's a red cardinal outside right now. It's only the second time I've seen her. And so I take that or him. I take that as a huge positive sign. Um, Thank you. Thank you, universe. Let's anchor that in. Thank you. Uh, Red cardinal family, among other things. So Monday's that and maybe one more after that. And then. Uh, assuming all goes well. I hear things. You hear things. One of the things I heard is we're going Florida. We're going Vermont. As I was hearing, um, 16 weeks, everything changes. In 16 weeks, uh, everything that you've been thinking about will change. And so don't even bother trying to sign a lease or anything until we get through that. That may be why I was so jittery. I'm not ready yet to fully embrace what's coming, even though... And I'm not, I don't like to call myself a law of attraction guy. I'm going to play with energy, sync up with the energy of the universe. I'm having a hard time getting past that hurdle yet. I'm doing so much hands on healing work on Jessica's belly right now. Um, But I am at peace and I do pray for Hannah to be here because I don't, I don't want to think about, um, I'll not be on her heart. Um, but um, but I am at peace and everything that you and I talk and everything that we go through and everything that we do leads me to know um, this was how it had to be. I mean, I asked the hard questions. You know, Six weeks ago, I was uh, hit by a truck or car, depending on what you call an SUV these days, you know, um, could that have created a ripple in the force that did this? Um, Jessica hasn't been able to get as much food in as she'd like and protein. Could that have done that? And what what the doctor showed us in a drawing is basically through 12 weeks, uh, the babies are kind of on their own. Um, and that's when all the uh, miscarriages tend to take place. Mm. And then at 12 weeks, the placenta comes online, this organ that mm. supports them and takes care of them. And when the placenta come on came online, it was only built for one. Mm. Miracle was off to the side, couldn't get the blood flow, couldn't get the drainage. Her umbilical cord was tiny. Mm. Nothing was set up properly for two from day number one. Mm. And the doctor's like, look, I don't have the means yet. We're learning so much. She was the head of the study that we got signed up to do before we, she's like, we just don't know yet. But from day number one, so this was the cosmic setup. And Miracle was here. Because Hana, we've had three miscarriages. We believe it's twice Hana and once a boy. Hana needed help getting through this time. Mm. And Miraku signed up to bring her in. And I went to Miraku in automatic writing and got that she was fine, that it was just uncomfortable for her because she felt like she was in a tight jacket mm. and it felt worse and worse each day. Mm. Mm. But she says that she is not only here, well, she's here on the other side, but she's like right here, right here now. And she's like, 
and what we're getting out of Hana too, and I spoke to Hana, is don't think Miraku's gone. Miraku here. I mean, really here. But also, if we have another pregnancy in the future, it's going to be a horse race. My guess, Miraku is going to win uh, versus the boy who came through one time to come here next. Mm -hmm. That she is just waiting. But she had to do what she could this lifetime. And they're both elders. These are, these are not newbies. So she's like, yeah, we play a lot together, but play isn't quite how you think. We've been together millions or billions of times already. Mm. Um, she's like, but I'm here with you guys. Wow. <sighs> oh, my goodness. So that's where, <laughs> where we're at, CJ. Wow, I can. I'm really, and words escape me. I don't even know what to say, Michael. Yeah, it's okay. I'm in a much. Yesterday was the first time I, I got out a, a sentence to my par parents that evening. Uh, no, no, the next morning I got out. It was the funniest thing. Left. I had to get the car charged to get back late at night, but it's a miracle we didn't have to stay in Philly. It was all just flowed. And we're in a rough neighborhood in Philly for the car charge. Rough meaning you go into the gas station and there are multiple guards with bulletproof vests on. <laughs> That's a rough neighborhood. Mm. And so I'm talking with my sister as I'm walking in. She's on the phone and I'm starting to fall apart. Just one sentence in. And then I go, because I'm going to go use the bathroom. So it's a long drive and both bound through bathrooms say out of order, out of order. And I just cracked up laughing. I'm like, we are so out of control, meaning Life is not our control, which is totally a freaking illusion. You can't even go and use the bathroom, man. <laughs> and I just broke out laughing and I got it. I got it. I mean, I got it the whole way through, but I really got it. And so um, I stop at the moment because I don't want to. I hear my egoic mind saying I don't want to do any discredit if that's even the right term to miracle but life is a beautiful journey yeah all of it it's a story it's a script is it real on one level yes on another level not do i want both girls here by my side in physical form oh my god yes am i still incredibly lucky oh my god yes is Jessica my hero of hero of hero of hero of hero of heroes? Oh my God, yes. So is Miraku. So is Hana. And I just have to let go and have that faith that none of this is operating from mind. We're plugging in. We're going quiet. Doing everything we can to operate out of love and just let it be as it is. That's where we're at. How, how will the two of you grieve? Celebration of Hana is how I hope we grieve. Mm -hmm. I think it's all going to be about Hana and um, Miraku too. So we have we have our doll that represents Hana, a doll that represents Miraku. They're still totally by our sides. Mm -hmm. um, we're not letting go of Miraku because spiritually she's still here. Mm -hmm. It's not that we're not processing there's a lot of processing to be done there's a lot of clearing work to be done um i believe right now there will be some chop wood and carry water and and prayer for hana's coming through and then we get to face it not face it as in um we're blocking it out far from it but there will be a leaning in at a very deep level that i believe will help both of us mm. and maybe help Miraku too because mm. she's still so I don't have the exact answer of what that will look like um, but I'm listening to how I'm speaking today versus even a day or so ago and it's different and part of that is the understanding of the big picture and part of that may be just me finding the neural pathways to make it through the discussions mm. <laughs> um, but even that will be a gift. Mm. And I truly mean that. And I, and I don't make light. It sounds almost like I'm making light of my own situation. No. Oh. What a Christmas. <laughs> it tends to be that way. When things go down in our lives, it tends to be between Thanksgiving and Christmas. 
every time. And I thought about that before we went in on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm going to celebrate Hannah being here today and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Today's Christmas Eve as we're recording this. I am going to celebrate so much. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of prayer, um, but I'm going to celebrate that. I'm going to anchor in what we do have right here now in this moment. And then we'll take the next moment. And then we'll take the next moment. What a beautiful gift that you're giving all of us in the sense of being so vulnerable at what I imagine is one of the most painful experiences that you've ever had in your life. It is, and let me be perfectly selfish. Speaking with you and speaking with everyone, I believe, is a healing experience for me. Yeah. So this is, as Michael was saying yesterday, um, this is my dharma. This is what I'm meant to do is to help people in this way. And so it is much easier for me to speak and go through it than to go quiet and feel cut off and not be able to share. Mm. Yeah, it's a blessing for all of us to just hear your navigation through, you know, just a... uh, how life is presenting and um, the strength of your heart yeah. and the strength which of I, all four of your hearts, really. Which I hope and believe is the strength of Hannah's heart as well. That girl, you watch her on ultrasound, is like the splitting image of me times 10. Just to try to take, they'd have to take measurements, you know, that humorous, the this, the that, the brain, the ventricles. And she's doing flip after flip after flip after roll after cartwheel after flip after flip after flip. And and there's only like a few seconds she took the equivalent of a rooster nap at one point, laid down just for about two seconds, and they're trying to measure everything again, and then back to all the flips. That girl has so much energy. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't escape me that her heart is double the size of, of Miraku's. Yeah. I mean... I don't understand how life works or how that happens, but it doesn't escape me that there's an incredible outcome. You know, her safety and vitality is pretty vibrant because of Miraku, probably. Oh, definitely. Miraku clearly came through to help give her sister what she needed, even the... uh, the ceramic gold stuff because that's what is around Hana's heart temporarily mm. to help Hana get through this time because multiple times Hana had tried to get through that first 12 weeks and couldn't. Mm. And this time she made it through. Wow. So, and then Miraku had given all of her life force mm. and we were blessed with being able to come in at just the right moment to be able to help her to transition so it wasn't a shock on her sister. Mm, Wow. Wow. What's a phenomenal story? No. (laughs) I'd like it if it wasn't a real story. (laughs) But, I mean, we all have this from 2020, 2021. We all have crazy stories, and this is just ours. Yeah. How's Jessica doing? Amazing. Um, I'm speaking quietly. She probably can still hear in the other room. I told her to turn up the TV loudly. Um, there's still obviously a lot of fear for obvious reasons. Yeah. Um, last night, she went into a place of looking at the research behind this sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And for a few minutes, for both of us, we're like, oh, did we do the right thing? Because I, I, our big prayer was for it to be so black and white, so easy. No ambiguity as far as what action take. I didn't mind it was ambiguous as far as, well, we don't know what to do yet. That's great. But, you know, do you have the procedure? Do you not have your procedure? I wanted it to be black and white. And it was. So for a few minutes last night, looking at the research, we're going, (gasps) but then we dug in deeper and it was very, very clear and peaceful that this was the only way with, I don't know about you. I'm not Jesus. I don't know how to walk on water. Yeah. If I knew how to walk on water, maybe I could have gotten a different outcome. But this is also meant to be. 
yeah. is clear from day number one. So I did not have the ability to, with my mind, reshape the placenta. When, did, had, when did you get the scar on your hand? What week was it that you got the scar? Um, uh, that was six weeks, uh, uh, Jessica's birthday, November. Well, November 10th actually was the accident. The surgery was November 20, uh, exactly, uh, uh, four weeks to the day, um, of, uh, Miracle's passing. Yeah. I think that this is, this scar is like a tattoo remembering her. Does yeah. that make sense? Is that how, totally. how you interpreted it too? Well, I interpret the scar, and I'll, I'll put it up one more time for people here on the audio and mm. video. You'll get your chance to see it. Um, is a, 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 both a serpent rising, yeah. but also it is it is also a shedding of the old skin. Mm. This is very much a, 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 a scar of transformation. Mm-hmm. I, I have a hard time twisting my wrist to get the right angle yeah, because you know, I see the wrist it. doesn't twist that much yet. Yeah. So it's all about transformation. Interesting that's one month. I also look at the numbers on on the day she passed, which was um, 1, 2, meaning December, 1, 2, 2, 2, 22nd day of December, 2, 1. It mm. started as 1. It became 2, 2, 2, 2, and then it finished as one. Wow. And that does not escape my um, uh, recognition as well. And and talking to her yesterday, it was interesting. She was like, I want you to go watch The Matrix, said Miraku, um, which came out, the latest Matrix, the fourth, interesting, two, 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 four, um, came out on the day that she retransitioned back over. There's so much, life is filled with so much mystery, so much coolness. If we let go, even this, if we can let go of the story. Yeah, or the, the story, outcome, the outcome yeah. that you're expecting, the attachment God, to the I, outcome. I still want our twin identical baby girls. I still want them. I still want them. I still want them. I'm not getting them in the form that I want. Can't have it. I can really try for that. I don't even do nothing I could do right now, but I could I could kick myself, I could guilt myself, I could beat myself, I could I could do whatever I want. Um, and and I'm sure there are even parents who don't come out the other side of this because of how much they torture themselves because they're they can't let go of what they want. Or I can go, this is universe, and that's where Jessica to me is the hero of all heroes of all heroes. Mm. To be able to say, because it's in her belly, we can do this. Mm. This is one of the hardest lessons on attachment that I've ever witnessed, honestly. (laughs) It's like, I I woke up this morning and I was reading this article, or this 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 chapter about um, teacher. And the thing about a teacher is to not expect a certain outcome or to under to understand that you have no control over anything yeah none zero zippo it's why you know you ask us can now we can start to dream where do you want to go because it's a single birth rather than a double birth you know as long as we're blessed with that where do you want to go i'm like yeah i don't want to stay in the rv it's time i'm I'm going to come out of the womb so to speak where we go though i'm like it is so not important in the greater scheme of things. None of this has the importance even anymore, if that makes mm, any sense. Yeah. The, the, the kiddos, family, love, people matter totally. Mm. Everything else, not not even mine to. I'll have I'll have desires, but so far from attachment. Yeah, and and what a miracle that you went when you did, because you got those automatic writing like 16 weeks don't worry everything will change you're like oh i wonder why you know and you're like i I bet we got to hustle in and go to um go to philly and get the get a checkup before 16 weeks happens and that's also sort of a miracle and and the way it worked out because i had to make a bunch of phone calls and they're not getting us in and they're not getting us in and and i wasn't flowing uphill this was not a force or fight but it was a keep gently asking the question and see what doors open and keep gently asking because you feel that tug on your heart. Mm. And that's what we did. And it, 
no, it's the story, but we're going to stick to it. That it literally could have been minutes. I mean, they kept her in there at the at the EKG because they're seeing the blood going the wrong direction in her heart. Mm. Wow. And, and then at some point stopping, no heart, no no uh, blood movement. Wait, so they said like, that they, were, they saw the blood movement stop. It was. They said sometimes it was going forward, sometimes it was going backwards, sometimes it wasn't moving at all. Wow. Wow, so it was literally yeah. at the moment. Wow. Oh my gosh. Maybe and 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 to find the person who's the expert, I mean, the likelihood of finding someone who knows the most about this topic and then has a ten minute surgery, like All of it. Yeah. Wow. We followed that flow line and it was miraculous. And you can go, well, but it's not miraculous. You didn't save both girls. Well, if we saved one, it's a miracle. If we save Jessica, it's a miracle. Mm. It just is a miracle. And if all of it did was bring peace that we did everything we could do, it's a miracle. Yeah. What more can you ask for in life? Yeah. Oh. Wow. Wow. What a Christmas Eve story. So. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, it's a gift, Michael, for you to share this. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. And and thank you for listening and being open to listening and guiding me because I feel it gets to be shared. Um, yeah. That it's it's an honoring and, and it's an honor to share. And hopefully it will help people because we all have our massive, scary, big decisions. Um, hopefully this helps on some level. Yeah. Yeah. So, to all of you guys. Thank you. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna hang out. I'm gonna I'll, I'll I'll bring us bring us home light and easy. We're gonna hang out in the RV. We're not gonna go into the in laws house. Jessica talked about you know going in there and, and watching, but um, I I don't want her. She's supposed to be bedridden. Um, bed bathroom down to the kitchen, and and I, I I'm like look I'll go down to the kitchen for you. Because we, we want to make sure that her water stays intact. Yeah, yeah. Um, because there was a d pinhole incision, the tiniest mm -hmm. incision in there. And so I'm like, let's let's not move yeah, at all. And exactly. Then... Stay still for, for the next couple of days, which will be good <laughs> for you, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm sending all sorts of prayers, love, um, Just gratitude for Miraku. Strong, healthy, happy heart. Yes. All right. Healthy, I will. happy heart for Hana and, and for Miraku, who is, I know here. I know here. I know you're here. I know you're here. Yeah. Um, I can feel her. I can totally feel her. Um, it would almost surprise me. It would definitely surprise me if Hana does not have this super connection to Miraku where she can see her, she can play with her, she can everything when she comes through. The very cells of Miraku's beingness, I'm trying to say it as non-graphically as possible, are being used to build Hana now. Wow. I just got chills just thinking about that. Wow. Well, thank you, Miraku. What an um, um, unbelievable sacrifice for for Hana. That's that's an elder. <laughs> that's yeah. an elder coming through to do that work. Are you freaking kidding me? Yeah. Wow. She's so. going to be one incredible girl. Yeah. And we're yeah. incredibly lucky. Lots of blessings. To be your child is a huge blessing. Gosh, yeah. like I can't even imagine how lucky both of these girls will be. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So stay tuned. We'll have yeah. a, we'll have, I'm hopeful for, and I'm so glad we did it last week. I'm so glad we did it today. I'm hopeful we will have a much more celebratory. Although, like I said, I really am at peace. I really am. Yeah. Um, but I hope for even more of a celebratory show next week after we pass the Monday mark. Um, and I admit I'm still holding my breath. I can, I can still have attachment. And I can still be rooting for the home team here. I know the home team. Well, you're is human. <laughs> I mean, it's not yeah. like you've, you've, you haven't become an angel yet as far as I know, because I can physically see you. I'm not seeing if, if the wings are here. I'm, I'm okay with this. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh, I love all of you guys so much. Yeah, and yeah, and the audience just thanks for your support because I know everyone is just praying for Hannah and for the three of you. I, I recognize synchronicities right now here on the East Coast. It's one, 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 and so I'm immediately in my mind's eye going into a prayer for Hana. Because whenever these these portals, when you see any repeating digits, I go to the angels are saying they're here, and angels, please take care of Hana. Please help her to grow her heart, super healthy, resculpt it so all the pressure is taken off of her, and she's great and healthy and happy and born super easy, have the most amazing, incredible health for this lifetime and beyond for our highest good and the highest good of all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen to that. So, mm. going to her guardian angel as well. Mm. And the guardian angel for Jessica for this healthy, happy childbirth. All right. Ooh Any last words you've got, CJ? Just to send you and everyone love during this very special day. So. And blessings for Monday. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler and... CJ Lou from the Fired Up with CJ show. So be well, have fun. Look, we're all going to go through this in life. We are all going to go through this. It's going to be okay no matter what. Go quiet, breathe in. Have faith and knowing that there is so much more at play. And just be with whatever is. You'll get through this. And above and beyond all else, shine bright. Woohoo! <laughs>